let me make sure that I have this. People are probably wondering where in the Sam Hill is Marble. All right, let me pull up my Facebook page. Here we go, we are live. Good afternoon and welcome to all of you to the Ask Marvel Lunch Hour Live. As usual, Marvel has a show for you. You do not want to blink in these Wakandan streets. Um, oh my, hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Uh, let me do this, hold on, let me do this, because you know, I always go over here and then lose my mind. Uh, let's see. Here we go. We are here and all is well in these streets. I am Andrea Lawful Sanders. I am your host uh, for the Ask Marvel Lunch Hour Live every Wednesday from noon to 1 p.m. Today I have a lineup for you that is going to make you wonder. Uh, <laughs> because we're going to talk about all things that are going on in this uh, United States of America. Let me just make sure that I'm sharing this to my own new speed and letting folks know. Lord, help us, Lord. All right. And so now it's it's on my page, uh, Denise and Kier and Jasmine. You can also share it live from the Philadelphia Sunday Sun page. But let's go. We have a lot to discuss and a short time to discuss it in. And you already know Marvel plays no games in these streets. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Good afternoon again. If you are just joining us, I am Andrea Lawful Sanders, and I am your host for the Ask Marvel Lunch Hour Live, a show that airs every Wednesday from noon to 1 p.m. on behalf of the Philadelphia Sunday Sun. Catherine Hicks is the publisher, and on behalf of them all, I'd like to thank you for joining us every single Wednesday. You never know what Marvel is going to say. <laughs> so bless Catherine's heart. I want to first give you the disclaimer so we can move forward with this conversation. The advice offered during Ask Marvel Lunch Hour Live is intended for informational entertainment purposes only. Use of this broadcast is not intended to replace or substitute for any professional, financial, medical, legal, or other advice. If you have specific concerns or a situation in which you require all of the above or some of it, you should consult with an appropriately trained and qualified specialist. The Ask Marvel Lunch Hour Live, its show, the Philadelphia Sunday Sun newspaper and publisher are not responsible for the outcomes or results of following any advice in any given situation. You and only you are completely responsible for your actions. Welcome, y'all. Um, we have uh, <laughs> we have Danae Ree on Sundays. We have Live with Moni. She was on earlier today. Sunday Sun is moving and shaking. You can follow them at, at the Philadelphia Sunday Sun on Facebook. Or you can follow them at Phyllis Sun on Instagram and Twitter. I don't want to take up much more time because, hunty, Marvel had was to take a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about her troubles. And then I called on some powerful women. See the white woman in the corner over here? Bless her heart. <laughs> She said, I will join you, mother. I'm going to join you and we're going to talk about, because see, I always say to each and every one of you, we cannot have conversations in silos. I already know what the black women are going to talk about. I'd like to talk about to white folks who are dealing with this. And Denise um, is someone that I met in New Jersey that moved to Alabama. And I said, oh, she in Alabama. I got to have a conversation about what is taking place in Alabama. And Denise is, uh, what we're talking about is exactly what she's doing. So I'm going to, uh, you know, invite all of you to listen with an open heart today. Um, give us some solid uh, uh, instructive advice because I just got off the phone with a friend of mine in another state in, in, in Massachusetts who said, call your sons, tell them to get licensed to carry. And when we get to that place in 2021, um, it becomes more than just trite conversations, right? This person knows what's happening at the highest levels and at the deepest depths of it. And so to hear them say this, <laughs> I had to say to them, yeah, my older son is already, I think my youngest son is on his way there. And so are we in our house, right? And no one would have ever thought that any one of us would want to get to a place where we'd be licensed to carry firearms, but this is where the country is. So if you have been under a rock somewhere in these Wakanda streets and you did not see uh, uh, insurrection erupt at the Capitol uh, uh, steps on last Wednesday, a week ago, let me just remind you, shall we? Mm-hmm. 
Last Wednesday, the, they were certifying the election to, uh, at the state and Senate level to make sure that uh, folks knew that Joe Biden won for the 150th time because we done been to the Supreme Court, we done been to the state level court, we done talked to Jesus and all the disciples and folks still said that Donald Trump did not win, right? Fair election. I'm sorry, Jasmine and Keir, y'all know I got to say what is on my mind, right? And so as we've been going through and all of this stuff is going on, we get to January 6th, you know, because they tried everything, including with the help of some um, uh, people in, in the Senate, especially, but in the Congress, too. And so January 6th comes, I'm out minding my business, doing something, and I get a call from my youngest son, and he says, Mom, they done lost their minds. The country has erupted. I turn on my television, and I see white folks climbing the walls. I see police officers opening the barriers and letting them in. Come on, white people, let's go. I see police officers taking selfies. I see school board members and business and leaders and industry in here in Philadelphia and Montgomery County writing on their social media pages, white power, we are taking over the country. I see them bashing the heads of police officers in. I see them, you know, I just see all sorts of things. And I said to myself, well, Lord, well, well, Lord right? Because Black folks are not surprised. Some of us are, and I don't understand why, but for the majority of us, we were not. So here we are today. This morning, I get something, and then I'm going to open up the microphone because y'all need to be ready for this conversation, honey, because, you know, Marvel did not come to play. We never do, but it is what it is, right? This morning, I see something in the news. Let me pull it up. So I want to make sure that I read this. One of the organizers of last week's Stop the Steal protest, they're calling it Stop the Steal protest, not an insurrection, not a, an attempted coup. It's a Stop the Steal protest, which spilled over into a violent assault on the United States Capitol, claims that three Republican congressmen helped to plan the entire thing. Right-wing activist Ali Alexander said he and the GOP lawmakers who he identified as Rep, uh, uh, um, Andy Biggs from Arizona, Mo Brooks from Alabama, and Paul A. Gosar from Arizona planned the protest as a means to put pressure on Congress to reject the certification of Joe Biden's election win, reported the Washington Post. Open up your microphones, because I'm going to think before I say something that may get me booted off of Facebook forever and a day. <laughs> <coughs> Welcome to Denise James. A uh, well-respected uh, journalist who has been one for, I can't tell you, as long, and, and, and a dear friend of mine, excellent writer, professor at Temple University, and on and on. Jasmine Sessoms from She Can Win, honey. She's getting ready to do a brunch that we're going to talk about, that lots of us, she's helping black folk, white folk, any folk with a little bit of sense in their heads run in a decent election and win, because it's not enough just to say, I want to throw my ring in the hat. You got to have core values. We're going to yeah. talk about that. Mm-hmm. Keir Bradford Gray, who is the chief defender of the Defenders Association in Philadelphia, a black sister that rocks, uh, uh, fifth largest Defenders Association in, uh, in, the, in the country. And, you know, sitting in that position is not one that is an easy one. And people think she's just over there, you know, playing with the lollipop pops and the tulips, but she faces a lot and she got a lot of people in her background though. So don't mess around with, I'm telling you, don't play them simple games. We're not there for it. And Denise, um, uh, who is a friend of mine that I met in New Jersey when I was doing some work there. She has since moved to Alabama. My brave white friend. I love my brave white friends. You know, I got quite a few of them. But Hunty, Denise and I were talking 10 minutes before we got on the air. And Lord, the white folk are acting up. They're acting up. And, the, and, and so white folks are fighting each other now, right? Denise and her family are fighting with other family members and other folks who are calling black folks. You know, one woman said to Denise, and I, I'm going to let her read this in a minute. One woman said to Denise, we didn't treat all the slaves badly. <laughs> I, I just snorted. <laughs> right. 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 Jasmine, you have to un un unmute because that was that's what you had to. <laughs> I didn't want to hear anybody hear my cackle nor my deep sigh. <laughs> Just yeah, it okay. was the most horrific racist comment I think I've ever heard in my whole life, and I've heard a lot. <laughs> I've heard worse, Denise, but the, it, it's up there. 
So to quote my friend who I was spoken to, speaking to today, this person said, you know, right about now, I will take regular old run-of-the-mill racism because these folks have lost their minds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so where, 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 where were you all when this began and what has been going on, children? Whew. Who wants to start first? Just call on us. All right. Yeah, just call All right, because, right. you know, Denise, what, where were you when all of this began? Uh, oh, Black Denise. Go <laughs> <laughs> nope. on mute. Go on mute. Black <laughs> people get these two Denises on here. Listen, uh, listen, y'all. If this is your first time joining the Ass Mobile Lunch Hour Live, this show is real. There is nothing real, real. contentious about it. It's yeah. real, real. <laughs> all right, so Black Denise, where were you? So I was right here in this chair on a Zoom. I had just finished watching. Um, CNN was on, and and you know, because I was planning to watch this vote that day. Mm-hmm. We were going to have this vote, um, and I was online and uh, with someone, and they said, "Are you?" I got a text that said, "Are you seeing this craziness at the Capitol?" I'm like, "What are they talking about?" Well, yeah, it's crazy. It's been crazy. Okay, and realized they were actually breaking into the Capitol. Um, I was, the only disbelief I had was that in that first moment was that, is this really happening or is this some altered video that somebody's created and, and, and found a way to inject itself into what we're seeing? Cause it could happen, that could happen too. And then realize it wasn't, it was, uh, the, the fears and the warnings of so many for so long coming to fruition mm-hmm. and and you know we'd seen it in Michigan, and I thought that this is this is the folks from Michigan, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and also thought black folk could never could never have gotten that far without being shot mm-hmm. on the spot. We couldn't we, even get up the street to the, to the to the fence. We couldn't even get to the fence. We would not be climbing on that wall <clears throat> like it was a rock wall. Mm-hmm. Our blood would have been spilled. Yeah. Uh, 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 Kier, let me go over to you, and then I'll get to the white Denise. <laughs> my girl so where were you Kier, when all of this started unfolding so i was sitting right here in my office first of all can you see me well Denise? oh yeah speak? we can see you well huh? okay. you're looking like black girl um, magic go ahead so i was sitting in my office actually working on my um my response to the city to not take away my budget so i was very very entrenched in my work and i kept hearing things um uh, you know going on in my office and people were saying look at was going on. So I finally turned on the news and I literally thought it was it was it was fake. I thought that they had really like juxtaposed some pictures because I did not believe that people knew how to scale walls like that. I just did not <laughs> believe that that was actually true. And I literally even though we know that this is these reactions are possible mm-hmm. and that these things are, are what some of the people during the Trump administration have demonstrated. Mm-hmm. I was sitting here with my mouth wide open saying, mm-hmm. are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. You're putting this on full display mm-hmm. for all of us to see mm-hmm. how you know that this is your country and because you didn't get what you want, this is what you're going to do to demand it back. Mm-hmm. despite whether it's lawful, the, the lawlessness, the, the, the clear callousness. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was no understanding to me as to why the reaction from law enforcement was what it was for people who were definitely hostile. They were, they were, they were terrorists. I mean, I mean, they, I was terrified watching it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, yes. and I, have, so I saw one of the things that I did see when there was a man who was being interviewed and he was really ramped up. And what he said was, you did this to us. We were good people until you did this. And I'm sitting here like, so you lost an election and this turned you into a villain? Mm-hmm. Imagine if you were in the position of people who had never been invested in by the government from the first place. Mm-hmm. And, and just the way you would look at the world and view the world and view actions. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's, it's a total disengagement mm-hmm. from reality. It is. But it almost seemed that they were radicalized, right? Not almost, 
they were radicalized because they've been fed this kind of information for years on end, you know, taxed enough already, the Tea Party, you know, they're coming to take away our America. They made these people feel like, you know, black and brown folks were the scourge of society and were not to be trusted in any way, shape or form. And we saw that playing out in business and industry every single where. We have to work so much harder to get where we need to because there were the mindsets of so much was that, so many was that we were not worth it. What they have been fed, the information that they've been fed. And let me tell you, millions of dollars went into that information feeding, right? Yes. And, and, and they worked, you know, over years for these people. So it's going to be hard. When you are radicalized, this is not just a thing that happens in the Gaza Strip somewhere. It, it, we have homegrown national uh, level terrorism here. And when you're radicalized and you believe that a certain thing is a certain thing, it is very difficult to change the minds and hearts. In fact, don't even try, right? Something, it, it, something crazy has to happen to get them to a place where they either flip or they're going to die. That's just the way it is when you radicalize somebody. So Denise, white Denise, <laughs> you are in Alabama. Where were you when all of this started unfolding and what were your thoughts? I was um, teaching my daughter. She's uh, both my children are virtual learners right now. My husband works from home. He, he was told by a coworker that something was going on and he came in and said, there's an attack at the Capitol building. And so we immediately turned on the TV and then I was glued to it. it I don't think I felt anything like it since 9-11. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That was the last time I think I felt such a horrific shock from what was going on um, on the news. Mm -hmm. Same reaction you did. I was watching them attack the police and the police not fight back even. Mm -hmm. Kind of take a... a uh, stance where they were backing up, but not even fighting back as people were punching them. Mm -hmm. like, this is unreal. This would never happen if there were Black Lives Matter protesters uh, attacking them. Because I've, I've watched the protests across the country and seen them attack people who weren't doing anything. Mm -hmm. And I was in shock. I'm like, how is this happening? It right. was real. I was take riot gear and break the windows and go right in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. And you know, I run a radio show on WRD and a white man called in, God bless his soul, because I don't know who told him to call mother and <laughs> said that, um, you know, the woman that was shot, she was just sitting there and a black police officer lazed her up and, and shot her. Why didn't he shoot everybody else? And, you know, and, and just talking all kinds of yin yang. And this is what I mean when I say folks, when they're radicalized and they believe what they believe, I have to shut him down. I was like, sir, you cannot equate uh, a breaking into the seat of democracy. <laughs> with right. You know, folks walking down the street in a protest. Yes, absolutely. No. You just can't <laughs> wait. So he, he gave up on me and went on about his business. But Jasmine Hunty, where were you and what were your immediate thoughts and what did you burn down? I was sitting where I am right now in my house at my counter mm -hmm. and I didn't burn down anything. And I most certainly didn't think it was fake. I was like, look at the white people, white people. And somebody had told them that. This is no longer just their country and that the people actually have a vote and look at how they act. What a strange way to find out that the police know how to de-escalate a situation, right? I saw a meme like that and was like, wow, that's really true. I mean, they were escorting the young lady down the stairs and she was mule kicking them. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't shocked, I wasn't surprised. Yeah. I sat there and I got myself a nice drink and a coffee mug and I watched the foolishness and called my girlfriend up who's in DC. I was like, how are you? She was like, girl, barricaded in my house as people are marching in the streets over an election, as you like to say, mother, that he had to talk to Jesus and all the disciples about that you lost, okay? This is a petulant child who has an army of minions that are angry because you lost. You know how many things I lost? I lost my iPhone yesterday. However, did not kick the side of my car door or anything else, nor run up to city hall. Mm -hmm. You have, we have to call this what it is. This is racism at its best. However, this is America. This is the America that I know. This is the America my dad knows, my husband knows, my brother knows, my girlfriends know. Mm -hmm. This is the America that all of us know and we can no longer act like we don't, okay? America, tuck your racism in. Your slip is showing. It's embarrassing oh. at this point. The slip okay. has fallen to the floor. So, no, so, 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 
Let's talk about that. Y'all can't even hide the racism no more. Y'all are so exhausted that actually covertly hiding the racism has now exhausted you. Right. So now is look, we tearing and burning it down. By all means, burn this country down. It wasn't built for me, no way. Nor people that look like me. Burn it down. I'm good over here. I got a glass of champagne. I'm waiting for the Shirley Chisholm brunch. I'm good. Burn it down. <laughs> We're gonna be in Facebook jail, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> We gonna be in Facebook jail. So you know they waiting to arrest us. We gonna we just be in Facebook jail for talking about it. Kira, I'm gonna go all back all on mute then. All, all she's saying is that if white folks want to burn down the place, burn it down. That's I'm one of them, right? I, no, I, I agree. But, you know what though, Andrea? Mm -hmm. It is interesting that calling someone a racist or, or or calling out racism is worse than the actual acts of being a racist yes. and the things that they're doing. And it has been, you know, this has been used to silence us so much yes. about being careful as to what we call out when we see it in plain view. Mm -hmm. And we've been watching it and watching it and watching it for so long. And for me personally, I watch what happens in the justice system in a justice, justice world where people are kind of taken into the system and questions are asked later. I'm mm -hmm. watching CNN and I'm listening to all these people saying, we're investigating who should be arrested. Right. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. This methodical approach to mitigating who should and who should not mm -hmm. does not happen for the people I represent or the people within my communities that I care so deeply about. Mm -hmm. And let's just, just juxtapose to this summer. My office represents over 500 people in connection with protesting from Walter Wallace to, um, to George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And many of those narratives don't even know what these people did. Mm -hmm. Half over 70% of the people arrested were African-American people. And I know I watched the news and I saw people of all races mm -hmm. doing all kinds of things mm -hmm. during this. So it just shows that there are two different responses mm -hmm. for the same behaviors mm -hmm. when done by different people. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to be hard for them to walk that back mm -hmm. the next time something happens with the African-American community. Right. Because we have now it's like a real equal protection under the law right. type of argument because we have exhibit A which right. is you showing your whole entire behinds mm -hmm. to the entire world, not just country, mm -hmm. world. And yeah. so I am really looking forward to moving forward with real truth and reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And what are we going to do to make sure the disproportionate way we treat minorities with the at the hands of, of, the, of the justice system does not continue to happen? So here's my next question. We saw people in the highest levels of government involved. It is being said that there are three uh, senators, uh, three Congress people. One of them actually gave one of the, the, the people that were coming into to, 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 for the insurgents a tour of the Capitol the day before all of this took place. All of this is starting to unfold, right? We saw that there were police officers, or at least one police detective in Philadelphia that is on desk duty, um, seven uh, SEPTA police officers that are under investigation, and I'm sure there will be more. I personally saw people I knew. I was just, oh, I said to myself, I clutched all my pearls. I said, oh, well, and you got all brazen about it too in these recorded streets. I just left them alone, right? Because you know, all now everybody's crying and saying, but I only went there. I didn't participate in the looting and the violence. I only walked into the Capitol building. Do you know it is a federal offense to break into the Capitol building, whether you broke something or not? Where are these people living? So here is my next question to all of you. We see now we've always talked about policing, right? <laughs> and you know, I have family members that are police officers. I mentor people who are police officers. There are folks there. I have friends, great friends who are police officers. And I have been working with police departments for over two decades. So I, I, I consider myself an authority on this. And I have had conversations with mayors of towns and police chiefs who have said to me, we have tried everything to uproot the unruly ones. The union gets them back here. What do you think is going to happen now in light of everything that has been on full display, not just in the police departments, but at, at the army, the, 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 the air force, the, I mean, <laughs> they were coming from everywhere. Some of them were um, veterans, you know, that had been a part of it and retired, but some of them were active members. W what do we say to people now as it applies to police and where do you think police departments are going to go as a direct result of what took place last Wednesday? I don't know, Denise, you want to take this one? Because I got a mouthful, but I'll let you go. <laughs> well, I think it depends on uh, whether or not it is one person within or a few people within a department that are championing change. 
And that change has got to come from within and from the outside. The pressure has to come from both places. We've seen people who have, uh, we see people in police departments who individually try to impact change when it comes to institutional bias. But one person does not an institution change or make. And what often happens to those voices and those people is they get chased out, squozed out, scared out, or hurt out. And I mean, I've seen some of that personally. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I think it depends on where you are is the answer. And, and it depends on where you are because it depends on who's in the game, who's in the circle, who's at the table, because it's not, and it can't just be at the table, right. but what communities are you in? So. Uh, for example, you, you're asking with your context being a union, mm -hmm. uh, that is going to be, in my estimation, the hardest part of the change mm -hmm. because they are not accountable to voters in the same way that other folks at the table are. They're not accountable to neighbors as in the same way that Ms. Johnson is. Mm -hmm. They are accountable to the people they represent. Mm -hmm. And that's how they've been able to operate. And they are funded very well through those people. So that's gonna be the hardest one. And whether or not some come to the table and make change and others are made to change, and I don't know what that looks like or even mm -hmm. if it's possible, mm -hmm. um, that's gonna be the hardest thing for sustainable change within police departments mm -hmm. when it comes uh, to institutional bias. Because as you've we've all pointed out, mm -hmm. there is not a belief by many that it is bias or that it's institutional. Right, right, right. It's so, true. Can I jump in here? Yeah, go ahead, jump on. <laughs> I want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I agree with you, Denise, I do. And I think that we have always laid powerless to the unions. And quite frankly, it is time for us to regain that power. Uh, yeah. Every mayor has the ability to come to the negotiation, negotiation table and demand things. Now that we have an understanding of the balancing of the interests, right? We have mayors that are trying to protect their cities from people angrily rioting because of this behavior that has gone on unchecked for so long mm -hmm. that need to come forcefully to unions and have that as a part of the bargaining. If anyone displays publicly uh, at any time, any any understanding or excerpt of racial bias, wearing SWAT sticker tattoos, putting stuff on Facebook, which many of those people are still in that uh, police department mm -hmm. after the Plain View Project e experience blew out, blew that undercover. If you even do that, because I'm a lawyer, there are certain things I cannot do based on my professional ethics. Mm -hmm. There should be the same standards in the police department. And quite frankly, I'm not saying that it's easy, but it is worth the fight. Absolutely. It is worth making sure that it's not just a mayor in a, in a small room and negotiating table, that there is a campaign mm -hmm. around how racism within the department has never been smoked out. And the fact that we need to do something, which is be, be more, hold them more accountable, that is something that has to happen despite the fact. I hear a lot of people say, well, if we get rid of them, Act 111 will just give them their jobs back. So what? Do your part, get yep. rid of them anyway. Keep mm -hmm. building a record of why you're getting rid of them for the balance of the interest of the safety. Because what you're doing is you're allowing these people to continue to erode public trust, to continue to erode public safety for everyone. Mm -hmm. And then you're paying more money because now these people who are going rogue are costing the city millions yes. of dollars that can be going into real valuable taxpayer services. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that the cop out that I've seen is everyone talking about Act 111 and the union and the union, that should not stop you from doing your job. You know, everyone used to say, well, you're never gonna get integrated schools. That didn't stop lawyers from going ahead and arguing for it. There's always a case of first impression. And right now we have so much evidence, so much leverage to go for it, stronger than we ever had before. And I think that it is time. I wanna hear a mayor come to the stage or come yeah. to a press conference saying, this is what I'm going to do to make sure we smoke out racism mm -hmm. in this in this uh, system to protect the citizens of my city. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard that. Do you think that's possible? Then very quickly, I think there is another piece that we also have to look at. And let's look at them corporations. Uh, I don't know a lot of things, but I know how to read campaign finance reports. Hold on. Wait a minute. Let me put on my glasses. You know, I was going there. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Come on. Let's, come, let's, come on. Come, let's read them like a real... the tea, honey. Let's come. Let's on, read them like library. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, let's look at them corporations. Mm -hmm. Every union has a PAC. Mm -hmm. Every PAC 
has to file campaign finance committees every single cycle. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been looking at the police union here in Philadelphia, but across, more importantly, across our, across our Commonwealth. And there's four companies that I will not say because it's not my show. Um, oh, go ahead. Say it. You know, I'm looking at you, Comcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm that have repeatedly invested mm -hmm. very heavily in the police union in the police union mm -hmm. so at what point as you're screaming diversity inclusion mm -hmm. equity getting women blacks minorities black and brown people low income mm -hmm. a seat at the table but yet you are giving an awful lot of money to that their police union that continually shuts black and brown people out that will continually shoot us unjustly and it's not just here in our Commonwealth, it's everywhere. I can only speak to the Commonwealth because I like to keep an eye on who's giving what to who. Mm -hmm. And we have to start being account making the corporations accountable to us. Agreed. Where are you putting your dollars? And if so, I don't want my money. Look, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to cut off Comcast if they don't make a, a quick change. Right. We just won't have cable in the Sesame's house. Come on now. Come because on. at some point, we have to use our votes our dollars as weapons mm -hmm. like our life depends on it because you know we got spider-man in them scaling the capitol walls and you are willing to take out a very sacred part of our government you're surely going to uh, take out me a black woman walking down the street no nah, you can't you can't keep giving money to the police union until we see some change mm -hmm. who are the other organizations that have been given the top five who are, do you have their names well, one I work for, so I'm just not going to. But we going, <laughs> we going to change that though. <laughs> that's I, got there. I know, <laughs> I know. One of my siblings was like, "Oh, I work for this organization." I looked at the list of the organizations that the that have the corporations that have been giving, and I mean millions of dollars. I mean millions. Right? We have to yeah. look at them because these people could not stay in power without these corporations, and they're really doing it for their own vested interest to keep money at the table to for tax cuts for all sorts of other things that they're doing, right? Which is why Absolutely. I tell folks all the time, read because when you read those numbers, they're not hidden from you. They're just assuming that most people are not going to read those numbers. Thank you very much, Jasmine. We're going to talk about the Shirley and brunch in a little bit. Denise, where do you think police dis uh, departments are going to be? White Denise. <laughs> from, from here on out. I'm sorry, where they're going to be? Where do you think that, yes, do you think things are going to shift and change or are we going to be still stuck here depending on what you're hearing from your friends and family members and the folks that are on the other side? Well, I sadly think it's going to be a very hard fight. Um, I do, for the first time in a long time, have some hope. Um, given... Mm -hmm our president-elect's position um, and he has Kamala on, her, on his side and I think that they have a vision for um because I think it has to come from the very highest level, the federal level coming down. Um, I think truly it has to come from above. It has to be mandated. I don't think, I, I do believe there has to be action locally. It has to be pushed locally, but I think it's going to have to be a forced mandated um, occurrence because it's been so long, it's been needed and it's been pushed and nothing has happened. I, I don't see it happening without some kind of mandate. That's yeah. my opinion. Yeah. So a couple of things. There's a George Floyd uh, act that uh, Congress passed that was sitting at the Senate t a table uh, forever and a day. Um, so I think once we the session resumes um, at the end of January, some of that uh, federal movement will start to happen. But I want you to share, Denise, White Denise, uh, something that happened on Facebook with you. Just read what uh, this person wrote and then your response. Jasmine and Keir, I'm telling you now, uh, as we say in Jamaica, kibber your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hold your tongue. Just let her read. This is what this is like. This is just a microcosm of what's happening right now as people are going through this uh, uh, insurrection. I love calling it an insurrection because you know they don't want to call it a mob or a terrorist act, dem, 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 uh, democratic. What do we call it? Domestic terroristic act. Mm -mm. All right, go ahead, Denise. All right, I'm gonna have to say bleeping a few times because there's right, no problem. Bad language here. <laughs> when people were stealing and burning, they were calling peaceful protests, protesters. Now this is somebody else, this is not me. This is somebody else, just to clarify. When people show up and show support for the president, democracy and freedom, they are called a mob. The media does not report the truth. 
If you don't like what I just posted, please delete me. You're part of the problem. America, stand up now. Now, this is somebody who I went to high school with and recently friended me in December. So I was rather shocked by this stance. So I had to respond, of course. I wasn't having any of that. Um, this was my response. Oh, nope, that was her response to me. I addressed her and said, if you choose to unfriend me for a difference of political opinion, I can live with it. But consider that Black Lives Matter protests are literally fighting hundreds of years of being murdered at the hands of white men without anyone being held accountable. The day that you're afraid to send your child out on the street with a friend, or you feel fear um, of being murdered when you're, you're pulled over by, for a traffic stop by a police officer, then maybe you would protest too. Violence at any protest, any time is wrong. I don't condone that, but what happened, um, I'm sorry, I don't condone that. I lost my spot. Um, sorry, take your time. What happened at any violent protest, but 90% of Black Lives Matter protests aren't violent. Don't you see that on the news? No, just like 99% of Trump rallies aren't. But what happened today isn't how we change democracy either. That's just my opinion, I respect yours. Her response was the the most racist response I have ever received from anyone in, in my life. And that's not to say I haven't seen racism. I've seen a lot of it, but it was unbelievable. I almost fell over. Seriously, Black Lives Matter is a hate group, a racist hate group, not violent, you say? They burnt cities down, looted, destroyed businesses. Maybe if they did what they were told and asked, they wouldn't have to be afraid of... Just, <laughs> but no, they think they are above the law. I come from a family of police officers, which I almost fell over. So don't you preach to me. You need a good history lesson. Not all slaves were beaten by their owners. A lot of them stayed on even after they were freed. Were a lot of them mistreated? Unfortunately, yes. But that does not allow an entire race of people to demand reparations for it. They are not owed a leaping thing. They are not the only race that has had to struggle. Take a good history lesson in Irish immigrant. My family didn't have any slaves. Did yours? Get out of here. They are still selling their people today and they are slaves to our government. They are fed, housed, receiving free medical care and not contributing one damn thing to society. Still enslaved and for you to compare pissed off, tax-paying, anti-socialist, God-fearing people to a pack of animals is disgusting. It goes on. Give me a second. I'm trying over here, Andrea. I'm trying. I know, I know. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I, you know. I, have, I keep... <laughs> Go ahead, um, Denise. I know. It's... But we have to see. See, the thing is, it's one thing if we're sitting in a silo talking to ourselves. We have to see and hear what others are thinking. This person said, not all slaves were treated unfairly. And even after we were set free, we, we decided to stay. And now the government is taking care of. This was 2021, not 1865, not 1647. So this is what I mean when I say when folks are radicalized. You know, when they believe what they believe, it is difficult to get them into another place. And so we cannot continue to sit down in our little silos and think, <clears throat> oh, well, you know, this is going to be a different thing and it's going to change. Denise, who is uh, who considers herself uh, liberal and her husband and her have been dealing with fight. So white folks have been fighting each other. This is the only way I can put it right. They've been fighting mm -hmm. each other because there's some that believes that this should not have happened, while there are others who believe let's continue to go out here and do what we need to do. Hang on uh, one second, Denise, because, um, yeah. you know, I, let me let me get Keir and Jasmine, because uh, Keir looked like she's about to have a whole conniption. And I, need to get this out. <laughs> I don't blame her. <laughs> You know, look, I really appreciate you sharing that and I appreciate you having that dialogue because this is what we're asking people to do when they are in their spaces that we are not in. And so it's like really kind of be the anti-racist, right? Mm -hmm. Say the things that need to be said. But it amazes me how people talk so cavalierly about slavery. I mean, we're talking about people owning people. You, I, you own people. Right. I mean, in this day and age, it's called sex trafficking, because that's exactly what people are doing, trafficking people to own them to do what they will. We're talking about situations where a whole 
race of people were kept down at the bottom and still continuously kept in a certain position in society because they have structured systems to keep us there at the bottom of the social dominance order. And this continues today. It's now more overt than it was for a long period of time. Uh, you know, our, our opportunity to uproot ourselves during Tulsa was destroyed by the very same people they're talking about. Uh, where our, oh, well, you know, people are now, they're freed. But as soon as we get a, the ability to, to maintain for ourselves or to build for our communities, it gets destroyed. There are plans, there are designs that continues to keep us at the bottom. And now you're gonna start seeing, and you know, Jasmine, this is why I love her. She is this independent person that is pushing uh, black uh, and people to, to take uh, leads in these positions, these electoral positions. And, you know, this is going to be unstoppable, but it's still met with a lot of resistance and not just resistance from the so-called detractors, but even resistance from the supporters sometimes. Right? Yes. They yes. will support you. If you get in that to role, you don't point. do what they, they say, mm -hmm. then you become someone that they have to remove because you're bringing what they call identity politics. Mm -hmm. And the funny part is identity politics, the Democratic Party had, had one identity for a long time, mm -hmm. even though the backbone of, that, of, the, of the party were people with a different identity and different experience. Now we're getting to understand there are a lot of experiences in this country and people like myself or whomever gets into a position of leadership, we are going to bring that understanding to this position doesn't mean that you can't get what you want. It just means now this equal, more of an equal playing field. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, even supporters, don't like that. Absolutely. So let's let's talk about this for a minute. Jasmine, you hold on. What does this mean now for elections moving forward? Because I went on my radio show and I said, dear white men, take off my glasses. Take off your glasses, this year. Because of what's been going on in this country, white men are going to have a much harder time running for and winning elections, right? We have watched attorney generals not do what they're supposed to do, uh, district attorneys not do what they're supposed to do, mayors remaining complicit. And as we know across the country, and you look at the Senate and the, thank God women have started stepping up to run to do what needs to be done. But we have a cadre of white men that have gotten very comfortable with thinking because I make X amount of money, because I'm worth millions or billions of dollars, I can run for office and, and I can become the next highest thing. And so what does that mean now, Jasmine, as we move forward in terms of what elections are going to look like? And, and quite frankly, do you see that black folks have awakened? Because black folks woke up, Joe Biden is now the president elect with Kamala Harris for the United States. And they spent the, the group, the corporations, the, the, the folks behind all of this machinations worked so hard to suppress the black and brown vote until George Floyd was killed in randomly with, in his neck. And we were like, okay, enough is enough, right? Because we've been tapping on the door. Please don't do that to us. We've been knocking on the gate. Please don't do that to us. We've been ringing the bell. Please, Jesus, help us. We've been praying, calling on Jesus, sackcloth and ashes, and none of that worked. And when, 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 when George Floyd was killed on television, just, just in a cavalier way um, by a policeman that just didn't like him for whatever the reason, because, you know, $20 should not be enough to kill somebody, right? But or arrest them. Country, or arrest them. So the whole country <laughs> erupted and black folks started uh, getting out and they went to vote. Okay. So Jasmine, you're getting ready to do this um, uh, Shirley brunch, which when I saw it, I said, listen, I got to buy me a ticket. Tell folks about the brunch and then tell us what you think is going to happen with elections moving forward and why more people of color should step up to run. Wait, let me, let me, let me do the caveat. Don't just step up because you're black or you're brown. <laughs> mm -mm. do not step up because you're black or brown so she can win is having a shirley chisholm brunch and shirley chisholm is our spirit animal it is she is everything that we happy founders day there Kier. i saw that i saw that um she is everything that we aspire to be uh the spirit of her still lives on in us so we are having a virtual brunch on January 24th, it, that is one day, because you know we can do it on a Monday, but that is that would mark 48 years since her historical presidential run as the first African-American woman mm -hmm. 
to um, seek a major party presidential bid. And that happened in 1972. But, you know, our good sis Shirley, she was a first African-American woman, congresswoman as well in 1968. So uh, my girl is breaking in doors, kicking down uh, glass ceilings and the above. She is a trailblazer. She's your favorite fave. OK, so all of you elected officials pay homage to our good sis Shirley. But I got to tell you, um, we are on the cusp of something. Right. It is something. Uh, my dad said something to me the other day on Sunday. He was like, Jazz, look what happens when Black people vote. Look what happens when Black people vote. Because Black people have never, ever, not even in 2016, voted in such numbers. What we have to do now is keep that same energy in every election. In PA, we have a governor's election. There's a U.S. Senate seat open. Mm -hmm. The mayoral election's coming. The controller election is coming. Mm -hmm. Our DA election is coming. These are really, really important elections here in our Commonwealth that make us tick. Um, it's about voting. It's about education. But I cannot stress enough. We 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 have we're getting that part down in our Black and Brown community. And I want to just talk to the Black and Brown community um, just for a moment. But you want to know what the white men have over us? They know how to fundraise and raise money. They will never get out of them seats until one, we start forming alliances, strategic alliances within ourselves. Forget the party, okay? Forget both parties. Ain't neither one of them coming to save us. Right. We have to form strategic alliances within ourselves. We have to invest in the right candidates. Just like we tithe in at the church, we need to tithe to the correct candidates that will take our issues to the Capitol, to the State House, to City Hall, and really champion our issues. You know, I can't, I can't get over. Lindsey Graham is still sitting in office. Mitch McConnell is still sitting in office. But you want to know why? Lindsey was on TV begging for money mm -hmm. because our good bro Jamie out fundraised him. Mm -hmm. But Jamie didn't do the other part of the Strategic Alliance and really, really turning out that vote where Lindsey Graham did. Mm -hmm. Mitch McConnell, I have no excuse for him. He got to go. I don't care if I have to move. He going to have to go. I don't know what's going on. He has to go. But that is a message to black and brown people. How is it that that man can be inhuman? No heart. He does not care about his constituents. $600 and he didn't want to give us that. Yeah. He still sits in the seat. There ain't no way there shouldn't have been somebody to take him out where everybody mobilized and really moved out to take that man out of that seat. But we can do that here in our Commonwealth and we will. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but buy your tickets to the Shirley Chisholm brunch. The good sis Shirley. We sold out of the VIP boxes though. Can't get oh yeah, those down. VIP, listen, I think I was uh, number two or three in line for the VIP box. I was like, oh, I need this in my life. Uh, 130. How, how many people, 130 gone? 130 VIP boxes are gone. We still have general admission tickets. Go to www.shecanwinevents.net. It's a good time. We're going to have a good, good, good time. But more importantly, just being in fellowship with one another in these mm -hmm. trying times, mm -hmm. but more importantly, honoring the legacy of Shirley Chisholm. Mm -hmm. We have to carry her spirit with us day in and day out and keep her, keep her great arms wrapped around us because these are some trying mm -hmm. times and it's only going to get darker before it gets better. Agreed. Agreed. Um, Denise, Black Denise. Yeah, <laughs> I can see your whole face just like you want to talk. So what's what's what do you head oh, I, I just I first of all, I just want to say yes and yes and yes to the, the three, you three sisters for each of the things you just said. And, and um, Jasmine, I, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking uh, you are indeed unbought and unbossed as you sit and talk with us about uh, Shirley Chisholm who yes. was an eight-year-old little girl. I remember for some reason in 1968, my family being very excited about what she was doing. I have a question for you, Jasmine, about how we can help black folks understand that it's not a one and done. You know, we often say my vote doesn't count. And will we, or get somebody to join us in creating a, a campaign, I hate to use that word, but a campaign that that reminds people your vote did count. It counted in in Fulton County, it counted in Michigan, it counted in Pennsylvania, it counted in every corner where there was a vote. And we had we didn't have proof of that before. 
And I think we're going to have to continue to drive that proof. And I'm, I, that's my thinking, but I'm in your lane right now, Jasmine. What do you think about how we get people not to let go? Well, first to, to understand and then to not let go of the fact that their vote counted. First and foremost, Denise, you know, that means the world to me that you say I'm unbought and unbossed. I mean, you know, like Shirley Chisholm, it's seriously a spirit animal. I just feel like she's everything to everybody and my North Star. But it's like a two-pronged strategy, right? So first and foremost, that education piece and really pointing back to this election right here and say, look what we did collectively. Mm -hmm. But number two, it took a lot of money to move that needle. And you saw corporations and nonprofits and foundations, especially here in our Commonwealth. We are so far behind in philanthropy and all my philanthropy parents are probably like doing one of these numbers. We, you know, I came from the philanthropy world. We never connected philanthropy with civic engagement until this election. In the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, over $52 million was spent on get out the vote, civic engagement and voter education. I don't even care. It doesn't have to be 15 million, 52 million for this go round. Mm -hmm. Give us 10 million to continue to turn out the vote, making sure elections are fair. So we not only have to look within the community, Denise, we have to look at that funder or uh, community as well and say, here is what your money did to the real, I mean, for the first time ever, real grassroots organizations that are door knocking and going to strip clubs. I accompanied someone to a strip club in a pandemic mm -hmm. to, to talk to women that are sometimes forgotten Absolutely. or not touched mm -hmm. and tell them, you guys need to vote. You need to tell your clients, your customers to go and vote. And this is why. And they did. Yeah. We, have, we have a whole forgotten population in the black and brown community. Mm -hmm. But this election, we brought them into the fold. Mm -hmm. We not only brought our grandmoms and our grandpops and our mamas and our sisters and our sorority sisters, but we brought those that are forgotten about the mama, the single mama at the daycare and the checkout counter. We said, you got to vote. And this is why we always have to point back to niece, leave no man behind. We don't leave people behind if she can win. Whether you like it or not, we're going to drive you to the polls, take you to the polls. You're going to wear one of these t-shirts. You're going to go ahead and get your I voted sticker and go about your business because that's what we're about over there. But we need more organizations around the table that have that same, one, autonomy away from parties, mm -hmm. but two, that same passion, right? Mm -hmm. To turn out that vote and make sure we are putting the right people in the office. Mm -hmm. It's easy to put people in office. We can do that all day. Right. But so, how do you get the right people? Let me, let, me, let me answer this, a part of this for you too, Denise. It, what Jasmine just talked about is creating authentic relationships with people. That's what Stacey Abrams did, right? She went out and she partnered with folks and she said, listen, because she didn't make it a big thing, me, me, I, I. She went into the, into the community and she started partnering with churches. So what we need to do is to now look at the people who are not tied to a party system. And lots of folks here in this city are tied to a party system, right? And say to them, because that's how Barack Obama won his, a lot of his, uh, um, got a lot of his money. If you can give us $5 or $10, and, and really start to grow and, and not wait until six months before an election. So we're thinking about the mayoral race and the governor race two years from now, three years from now, attorney general, you want to start that work right now, right? And work with those people. And Jasmine, I believe you have the wherewithal to, because you're doing it, right? You're, you're Like Janice says, this is why the only reason why I like you so much. You're unbossed and unbought because I can't, child. I, in these Wakandan streets, Marba is not playing the game. And Kira already knows when my eyeballs start turning to the left, go please go to the right. Don't even look in my corner because I done read your title and read your bravado and read your I'm so important titus and I'm looking at what you have not done for your constituents. So I'm not somebody you can talk to about that kind of foolishness. But I know people in this city who are unbossed and unbought. Let's figure out how to work with those folks and make that, so we can do it. The, the, if we can get all those people out to vote. We see that people are now, the sleeping giant is awake. But we also have to now move forward in, in raising the funds. And you're right too, Jasmine, the funders, philanthropic, for those of you who are talking about, I'd like to give, if, if Comcast is giving all this money to the police union, the very same police union that we've been talking about all this time that's con consistently giving us heartburn and tea for the fever, right? Let's start really making them start taking a look, right? For, for Comcast make more money from black and brown folks because we just have to have our cable TV. Man, y'all better get a smart TV and act like you know 
okay? Start to hold some of these folks accountable. And it's not just Comcast, it's Chase, it's Citibank, it's <laughs> Verizon, AT&T. It's IBX. IB it's oh my gosh, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, yes. Absolutely. And so all of that is coming out and they're now all trying to save face and say things like we've temper we've we have suspended our funding. Suspending your funding doesn't mean permanently not doing it. And what, what's to say that four or five months down the road, they're not going to go back and and quietly try to start funding these people again, because at the root of this is money, y'all money. And so I, I am loving the fact that we're having this conversation. We have five minutes left. This is what I love about this show. It's like you're sitting in my living room, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> we're just having a whole conversation. Well, and we're not having your cooking, so I don't know if it's well, quite your living room, no. but so definitely this, not with that. Without that, this, talk on it, Denise. <laughs> as soon as COVID is over, all of you got to invite to Mama's dining room table. Denise, what do you think, white Denise? What do you think white America needs to do to get on board? And I'm sorry for calling you white Denise. You didn't put your last, and I can't. It's brand. I'm, I'm sorry. It's brasher. Right, th <laughs> thank you. I know you was Denise. I can't remember your last name. And I, I, I spent the whole show calling you white Denise. Don't you all take no offense. She and I are friends. Okay. I can do that. You can't do I that. I take no offense. It's fine. Oh, okay. Just, I'm just letting the, the, the listening audience know before they start saying some shenanigans. Don't come to me with it. <laughs> what do you think white America needs to do to move this needle forward? The white America that believes that this is wrong and that we all deserve an equal and fair America to live in. Well, I think much like... Um, I was challenged last time I was on your show. Mm -hmm. um, they have to step up and step in. And when they see things happening that are wrong, they have to do something about it. Mm -hmm. They have to take part in being the change. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot going on right now. And I really fear for the next few days what's mm -hmm. going to happen. Um, I was calling a violent event months ago I really thought it was going to happen on election day mm -hmm. but even still after election day I said something is going to happen and I still believe the worst is yet to come unfortunately mm -hmm. um, and the thing is the mentality behind what happened is here mm -hmm. and it's stay mm -hmm. you know the, the emboldened attitude is here to stay and I think the people who feel that this is wrong have to take part in making sure that it changes mm -hmm. and they need to get active in their community. They need to take part in protests when, when they're happening. They need to join township committee and be the change in your community because change comes from within doesn't come from outside. You can't stand on the sidelines and hope that things change. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, voting is essential. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I think, you know, civically, it's our duty. Um, so, I, and, and step up. If you see something wrong, step up. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't stand by because you're complicit if you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have, that was good. That was, child, you ended that very nicely. Mother is impressed. All right, so we have two minutes left. Who wants to give me your 20 seconds, Denise, 20 seconds, Jasmine, 20 seconds, Scared? Go ahead. Um, this Denise? Yes, Denise James. Uh, be very careful, be very yes. mindful, be very aware and conscious of your surroundings and the people who are around you because there are people who will be violent, whether they are in the mass mob or think that you're alone and vulnerable yeah, and yeah. off somewhere waiting for a bus. So be careful and remind um, your sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, and parents to do the same. Absolutely. Thank you. Jasmine? Let's keep that same energy. Let's keep ourselves informed. Tune out the noise, but stay focused. We still have a long way to go. All right. All right. Uh... I, I will end with, look, it's hard to know your strength and your power because sometimes you always, we, especially women, are very marginalized throughout our history and society. But now, knowing that strength and power and how it can help lead in areas where that have been forgotten and disinvested in, mm -hmm. I am more charged than, than ever more to understand how I can help be the change that I want to see, whether it's helping to advance another woman or myself. 
whatever that is, we should make sure that we are supportive in every way that we can and know that this can be ours if we, like Jasmine said, collectively do this together. We're stronger in numbers than we are in fear of what of the unknown. So we're stronger in numbers than we are in fear of the unknown. Keep the yes. same energy, stay informed, stay focused. We have a long way to go. Be careful, be aware, be conscious. Step up and step in and voting is essential. Thank you all ladies. Denise James, Denise, uh, Jasmine Sassums and Keir Bradford Gray. This version of the Ask Mobile Lunch Hour Live is officially over. I can't thank you all enough. This was hotter than hot. Goodbye. Thank you, Mavo. We thank love you. you. Yes, love you too. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye now.